It's a great pleasure to introduce the spring 2013 issue of C21 Resources. And our theme for this issue is a rich one, exploring the Catholic intellectual tradition. And I'd like to introduce it by dwelling upon each of those words, exploring, because it is a rich, diverse tradition taking root in many cultures and which is really inexhaustible. The university, of course, is the privileged setting where the church does its thinking, but it's not limited to the university. In our cover photo for this issue, we have in the foreground St. Ignatius Loyola, the founder of the Society of Jesus, a 16th century saint, but represented in a 21st century sculpture. And though he represents, as the BC campus does, the Jesuit tradition in Catholic education, it is not limited to Jesuit colleges and universities. In our issue, we have articles from people from Notre Dame, from the Catholic University of America, from Villanova. But even beyond the university or universities, the open sky of the photo beckons us to further exploration beyond the university into the world. The Catholic intellectual tradition for me, one of the most important connotations of Catholic is comprehensive. And the Catholic intellectual tradition has been characterized through the ages by its wedding of faith and reason, of theology and philosophy, but also engaging issues of law, of social justice, both the political and the mystical. In the issue are articles by Jesuit fathers Greg Kauscher and David Hollenbach, which probe the foundations of human dignity, of human rights, of our moral obligations and our responsibilities to one another. One of the great concepts of the Catholic intellectual tradition is the common good, not only the good of the individual, but of the community and of society. It's an intellectual tradition. As I said, reason is given its due, but not reason in a merely narrow academic sense. But as Pascal and Newman, two great figures of our tradition, say, the reasons of the heart. The heart has its reasons. And the reasons of the heart are so often evoked by beauty, which moves the heart to song and which sets the imagination soaring. Hence, our attention in this issue to painting, to poetry, to music, all illustrative of this rich Catholic tradition. The article by Paul Mariani on the great Jesuit poet Gerard Manley Hopkins frees the imagination. The article by John Finney, the director of the BC Chorale, but also the associate director of Boston's famed Handel and Haydn Society, discusses different musical settings of the Catholic Mass. The great composers who set the same words, but differently interpreted differently probed. And finally, tradition, not as some prepackaged set that is handed on, but vitally passed from person to person. And not only by the great thinkers and artists who are represented in the issue, Augustine and Aquinas, Raphael and Rouault, but by all of us, by the young and by the old, all who explore their faith who seek to understand its deeper meaning for all that they do and all that they are. For at the very heart of the Catholic tradition is not a set of ideas or a moral code, but rather a person, the person, of course, of Jesus Christ, of his life-giving death and of his resurrection that have changed the world. For me, the image that sums this all up is a great mosaic of the cross as the tree of life. Christ crucified and yet giving new life to all of creation. And so enfolded in the branches of the great tree that springs from the root of the cross are all human activities, labor and rest, study and farming. All of these embraced by the living Christ in his life-giving death and resurrection. And so if I could express my own hope for the issue, it's that it will lead us to a new way of imagining the Catholic tradition, a way that is a continued exploration, 
as we change, a way that, as Lawrence Cunningham suggests in the final article of the issue, will lead us beyond even knowledge to wisdom. And if I could add a hope of my own, even beyond wisdom, to prayer.